Hi, we're the uh, Model T Build Crew. I'm Joseph Staskowski from Waterville, New York, and I'm a sophomore. My name's Jerry Coho. I'm a freshman from Bellwood, Pennsylvania. I'm Jared Buckert. I'm a freshman from Hamilton, Illinois. I'm Bill Kalinas. I'm a junior from Akron, Ohio. I'm Brandon Peskinowski. I'm a sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri. Right, this is your Model T build team, and uh, we're going to see if these guys can put this car together in less than 15 minutes. We'll make it easy on them today. We'll say less than 15 minutes. So, um, you guys get ready. Well, I guess we need some volunteers from the audience. If anyone's got a stopwatches on their phone, um, wants to be an official timer, if we got got a guy, uh, the rules is you yell go, and they'll start. And you don't stop until the car runs and they start to move forward, okay? And they're going to drive off this way. So, you guys get ready? All right. Need some Yeah, go get the tunage going. I'll get set up back here. I'm going to stay out of the way you guys get set on. So, a little bit of information on our uh, car here. We get lots of questions on what year it is and all. We call it a bits of car. It's a bit of this car, a bit of that car, but the engine is 1926. So whenever you're ready. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. On your mark, get set, go. As you can see, the, the frame just took a couple of guys to pick this up real light. Yeah, the whole design philosophy on the Model T was to make it light and rugged. So it was really light. Uh, two guys pick it up, but see these cars with uh, two tons of weight you, you know it's a half ton car but uh, people would put two tons of grain in the back and drive it to town you know it'd be sitting like this you could hardly steer it because it would be such an angle but uh, they just kept on going the engine Joey here is uh, picking up is a 177 cubic inch four-cylinder making a whopping 20 horsepower but uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are saying my lawnmower has more power than that, but the idea there was all about torque. They didn't need high-end speed. The roads didn't allow that. Uh, but I've seen Model Ts that have hauled, that can, you could hook up to a box car and it would tow a box car. So not a lot of horsepower, but a lot of power. Uh, the, uh, it's a four-cylinder inline engine. You can see the box on top, which contains four coils. You know, the, the saying that there's nothing new any longer now. All the new cars, that's one of the fancy features, is having uh, a coil for each cylinder. And uh, that's what Ford was doing back in the, in the teens at the turn of the century. So um, as close as we've ever come to a perpetual motion machine, there's... Uh, no fuel pump, it just runs by gravity. The tank's up higher than the carburetor, just flows down. Um, no water pump, works the same way as an old coffee pot. Hot water rises, cold water sinks, and it just makes a big circle. Um, there's not even an oil pump on the, on the car. It has a magneto that produces its own electricity off the back of the crankshaft. And since Ford figured as long as he had magnets spinning around in a big circle, he might as well use them to pump the oil in, or sling the oil in the right direction. And feel free, if anyone's got questions, just yell out a question or two, and uh, we'll try and answer it. Um, Ninth, the engine the engine and most of the chassis is 1926. That's at the very end, end of the Model T. Uh, they came, the Model T was 1909, model year. Model T was introduced in about October of, two, uh, of 1908 and ran, ran into the 1927 and produced almost 16 million Model Ts inside the U.S. and they yeah, also produced cars in Europe and in Canada. So, there were a lot of them. I'm sorry? 
They did not. They were listed. They were sold in 08, but they were listed as ni uh, 1909 model years. Um, huh? Yeah, wait a second. How many people out there have, uh, have restored some of their own cars out here? Win? Took a lot longer than this, didn't it? <laughs> these guys are moving. We're, we're short a man. Um, our record for these guys is 8 minutes and 32 seconds, but uh, one of the other team members is actually the uh, Cars Club president who's putting this on. So uh, he's got a few other responsibilities today, but uh, these guys are moving along very well. Um, yep. Four minutes and five seconds. Four minutes, five seconds. Electrics up. Radiator done. So the bot, the the chassis is all correct. Model T, the engine, the frame, the transmission, wheels, the body is kind of a homemade um, contraption, but that was very common. Um, guy would buy a Model T. They were cheap and adapted to the use that he needed, or if he had a frame. Uh, we turn it into his pumpkin wagon. I don't know what this was was used at, but uh, um, sure looks like they're working on the wiring now. How many wires are there on that car? Six? Maybe? <laughs> we don't actually have the lights yet. Uh, they don't get on, but um, if someone wants to donate some parts. <laughs> So, um, Battery's connected. Battery's good. Battery's good. Hey, we got right here. Right Any other questions about the uh, about the Model T's or or the build team down? itself? No, oh, got it. All right. What's our time at? Five minutes, 38 seconds. Five minutes, 38 seconds. Yeah, we're moving along. I got it, I got it. Yeah. Uh, you can see them with the, the brake rods here, working on the brake rods. Those brake rods only controlled rear brakes for parking brake. When you push the brake pedal, it didn't actually go to the wheels. There's no brakes at all on the front. And the brake actually was a band around the transmission drum that slowed the drive shaft. So um, another reason for not needing more than 20 horsepower. We had to the stop. Uh, driving a Model T is a little bit different than your average average car. Also, you have three pedals, but none of them control the gas. That your gas is actually controlled by hand up on the steering wheel. Um, your your right pedal would be your, um, was your brake. You would use the left pedal as your transmission, your high, low gear and high gear. You would push it down for low gear. You build up a little speed, take your foot off, and it would switch into high gear. The exact same way an automatic transmission today works. This, you used your foot. 40s, 50s, 60s, they use hydraulic fluid. Now they use an electric solenoid, but it all works exactly all right. the same. Board, board, board. It was pioneered by uh, Ford. Uh, it's a bulletproof design. Um, and then the third pedal in the center was your reverse. You would hold your clutch in the middle and then push the, uh, the pedal in the middle to go backwards. And while you were driving, you also had to be uh, conscious of your ignition timing. You would, hey, depending on, on your speed, you were also right. adjusting your spark, yeah. your hey, throttle. You have to mix the carburetor yeah. mixture. So it was driving a car took a little bit of effort. It's kind of hard to text and drive. <laughs> What's our time? 7:46. Let's go. Hey, Joey, you ready? I'll jump up in the Joey. Yep. Grab on that. We're not in. I'll put these after you all the time. Getting the last little bits here. Oh, no. You connected? Yeah. All right. All right. Hold on. Ready? Go ahead. Oh, almost. Going out that way. Oh. Come on. Come 
Yeah. Too much. Well, we got it a little flooded, but uh, we Kill still got some time, yeah. right? 8:30. 8:30. Got to get it cleared out now. We don't. I'm. I'm kind of mean. We don't get these guys a starter. By 1926, they had a starter. We don't want them to cheat, so we don't even have one on the car. You can guess it. Oh. oh. Wants to go? Yeah. Okay. Let me try. Come on, Bill. Come on. All right, go. Yeah. She's a temperamental machine. Uh, somebody else grab it. Timing rod on. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Timing rod on? Nope. That's why she's not starting. Uh. Got it? Yeah. Okay, now go. Here we go! <laughs> <laughs> Two 